Hi, today I wanted to talk a bit about a piece of uh, vintage hardware, the Sharp CE150 printer unit, and uh, it's used in combination with Sharp PCs. Uh, these printer units are rather cheap on eBay, but uh, in most cases they are not functional, and uh, the reason is due to batteries inside this 30 years old unit. And I'll show you today how to look, take a look inside and see if the batteries are still Okay, so I've already removed the paper from the device and also the screws. Um, the screws are located on the bottom of the um, printer unit, so they are located um, here, 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 and also there. And after you've removed the screws, which I've already done, you can just take this unit and, um, well, remove the cover from the printer itself. And the best way to actually open the device is from this paper compartment here. So if you turn it around and take a look inside, you can see that there's a clip inside here and you can just take your fingers and uh, push the clip open. And as you see, there's a clip here and here and there are two more clips inside. And with a tool like this, like, like a, with a Plectron, you can just gently push these clips open. So when the uh, case is open, you can just um, put the upper part uh, aside. And as you can see here, the batteries have actually spilled. So you see battery acid at the contacts of the batteries. So here and also here and the whole battery actually, um, I'm not sure if you can see it here. The whole battery is actually um, covered in battery acid. And of course also the base plate as you see is rusty. So there's uh, battery acid spilled all over the case. And to well clean this mess up, you have to remove all the cables and uh, clean up the case and the electronic parts separately. <coughs> so um, the battery is only hold held by two screws and the whole battery can be recycled so I would recommend to just remove this. I've make, made a um, close-up as you can see there's battery acid, dried battery acid, it's actually base by the way, um, all over the place so here at the contacts and on the other side you can even see it better there and it's also um, on the um, traces themselves, so it's not that uh, bad actually, I've seen worse. And just as a reminder, uh, if you touch the battery, uh, I recommend to use gloves. So, as you can see, I've made a small time jump and I've mostly reassembled the unit. The base plate is clean now and also the PCB is mostly clean. I've used vinegar for the base plate and the, the case so you, there's no rusty stains here and here anymore. And also the PCB is mostly cleaned up just with simple tap water and I used a fan to a uh, simple hair dryer to um, remove the water from the device. And it might sound strange but water is the best to clean it up. So let's test the unit. Um, the device actually runs without the batteries inside. The batteries are only used as a buffer. That's because um, the regular power supply for this device only provides 500 milliamps and the solenoid, the magnet here in the printer unit and the motor itself needs more than uh, 500 milliamps. So the 500 milliamps uh, from the device are too few and if you have a power supply which uh, has up to 1.4, 1.5 amps, you should be fine and run the device without uh, any problems. So let's try that out and uh, see how the device works even without the batteries inside, which I recommend you to remove just to keep this device running if it's not already defective. <laughs> So as you have seen, it works fine again and it only consumed, uh, well, 9 volts and about half an amp or something like this. So 
If you have a power supply which supports one amp or one and a half, you should be fine. Well, thanks for watching and see you. Bye.